And the other major story at the Capitol today, the mounting calls for Senator Al Franken to step down amidst more allegations of sexual misconduct. For that, we're joined by Lisa Desjardins. Lisa, welcome back. So this story moved so fast today. We woke up this morning, heard there was another allegation, and through the day, one Democratic senator after another saying he should step down. That's right. It was remarkable. And this was led not just by any group of Democratic senators, but female Democratic senators. First, Kirsten Gillibrand of New York posted on her Facebook page a post that simply said, I believe, uh, Senator, Senator Franken should step down. After that, we saw other female senators, Maggie Hassan of New Hampshire, and then a slew of them, uh, well over a dozen of the 16 members, say this. And Judy, this is a record number of women in the Senate right now, and we're showing that they actually seem to be influencing those around them today. And, and ending, or I should say, at some point in the afternoon, the leadership That's of right. the party in the Senate. Uh, also call for him. That's right. Senator Chuck Schumer, the leader of the Democratic Party in the Senate, said it's time for Franken to go, and also the head of the DNC, Tom Perez. Remind us again, Lisa, what exactly are these allegations against Senator Franken? Well, let's start with the newest one. The one that seemed to tip the balance today was one from a former congressional aide. Uh, she told a newspaper that she uh, was on a, at a radio show of Al Franken. She was leaving, and that Al Franken kind of came up behind her and forcibly kissed her. Uh, she said she ducked out of the way. Uh, but she, that story was corroborated, the report said, by two people who knew her. And this is in keeping with other stories we've seen from women. We have now more than half a dozen dozen, seven women who have said that Al Franken either tried to or successfully forcibly kissed them, them or groped them, touching their behind or their breasts, sometimes in photo shoots, but in places as different as on a USO tour or at the Minnesota State Fair. He has said some of these he acted inappropriately on. Others, like the allegation today, he said was patently untrue. Well, and, and as we know, there have been several other allegations, but never, because we've now gotten to, what did you say, seven, mm -hmm. uh, it seems the dam has broken. You've been talking, Lisa, today with uh, folks around the Capitol. Mm -hmm. Democrats uh, have to be uh, in a whole lot of anguish over this. This is a moment of reckoning, and it's a very difficult moment, I think, for both parties, but especially Democrats right now. They're the ones that also saw, of course, Representative John Conyers in the House resign yesterday over similar allegations, which he has said are not true, but he's now leaving office. So today, talking to Democrats, Judy, I saw a real divide. There is one group led by women like Kirsten Gillibrand and others, some men as well, who say this is time to draw a hard line and to say none of this behavior is remotely acceptable in public office. There are others who say there's a special of behavior here, that there are different kinds of behaviors that are inappropriate, but they should not all get the same kind of punishment, which is being forced out of office. I think an example of that might be Republican Blake Farenthold. We learned last week that he is someone who actually did pay, use taxpayer money to pay a sexual harassment claim while he was in office, but yet there's no pressure on him that we know of to resign. In fact, he spoke on the House floor today. He's Republican, and, and there's questions about are there different standards here. I think what to watch Judy is uh, the question of Roy Moore will be interesting. Here is a man who says right. that he has done nothing wrong and voters will decide whether he should join the Senate. There's a question of then whether senators who say they don't believe him think he should keep that job or not if he's elected. Two more quick things I want to yeah. ask you, but just quickly on this question, the political calculation yeah. uh, for, for Democrats with Franken. The Trump wave last year made Minnesota a purple state. Hillary Clinton won Minnesota, but barely. Just by a point and a half, talking to Republican strategists today, they think a special election, should Franken resign, which would happen in 2018, could be a seat they could pick up. Who knows? Entirely different story, but very important. The government runs out of money this Friday, just, <laughs> oh, just two that. days right. from now, just that. <laughs> uh, you've been doing a lot of reporting yeah. on that as well. Okay, so today the House Republicans made a big decision. They said they are going to try and push a bill that would extend funding through December 22nd. And there are reports that the president says he would sign it. So we'll see. Hopefully that passes tomorrow and we get two more weeks of funding. Two more weeks, and mm -hmm. then we have no idea what happens after that. Then it gets even more complicated, yes. <laughs> Lisa Desjardins, you have the most fun job in anyway. <laughs> I think so. Thank you. <laughs>